Hello, welcome to Rando Tech Info. So Qualcomm has just announced its latest wearable platforms to the world, and I'm guessing you're here to figure out exactly what that means for us consumers. So without wasting any time, let's break it down. Qualcomm is calling their new platforms the Snapdragon W5 Gen 1 and the Snapdragon W5 Plus Gen 1. And they are the successors to the Snapdragon 4100 and 4100 Plus platforms, the first of which debuted in the Mobvoi TicWatch Pro 3 back in September of 2020, with the 4100 Plus first appearing in the Fossil Gen 6 in December of 2021. So it was about time for an upgrade. Qualcomm is promising these new platforms will bring better battery life, improved features and performance, and greater form factor flexibility to a new generation of wearable devices. And when comparing the two new platforms, the W5 Plus is definitely the big dog. This is because the W5 Plus is packing a coprocessor, which should provide significant power-saving benefits in more power-hungry devices. And it's what you can expect to find in full-featured mainstream smartwatches, such as the successors to the previously mentioned TicWatch Pro 3 or Fossil Gen 6. The non-plus variant is packing the same SoC, but without the coprocessor, and will be found in more segment-specific wearables like kids' watches or designated health trackers. And because the W5 Plus is the main attraction here, it's definitely going to get the most attention. The W5 Plus system on a chip architecture is based on a 4 nanometer process, compared to the 12 nanometer process of the 4100 Plus chipset, which in theory should hopefully provide noticeable power saving and performance benefits. Qualcomm is also promising power saving benefits by loading as many tasks as possible to the lower power 22 nanometer coprocessor which means the main processor will only be used for tasks that require the most heavy lifting, which Qualcomm claims will provide for less power consumption across the board in a variety of use case scenarios, as well as up to 50% improved all-day battery life. Qualcomm is also promising that their improved chip architecture will lead to a better user experience through increased performance. And all you need to know about that is that this should make devices more responsive when doing things like scrolling through an app drawer, watching videos, controlling other smart devices, or using a voice assistant. A better user experience is also being promised through the inclusion of new features, such as Bluetooth 5.3 integration, improved audio processing, improved GNSS tracking, faster DDR4 memory, and an upgraded modem. Qualcomm has also worked with a number of third-party developers to bring a variety of feature-specific benefits to the platform, and they have continued their ongoing collaboration with Google which will hopefully lead to the continued evolution of Wear OS, as well as bringing that evolution to more devices. Finally, Qualcomm is promising its new chipset should lead to improved wearable and smartwatch designs. The W5 Plus chipset is physically smaller than the previous 4100 Plus chipset. This should make it possible for OEMs to produce smaller wearable options, and could be big news for people looking for devices that take up less room on their wrists. And the chipset is also thinner, which should lead to less bulky devices and or the inclusion of bigger batteries. So on paper, this all sounds pretty great. So when can we actually expect to see this new chipset in action? Well, it looks like Oppo will be the first OEM to take the plunge and will apparently be dropping their Watch 3 series packing the W5 sometime in August. And Mobvoi currently has plans to bring something to market using the W5 Plus sometime before the end of the year. And apparently we can expect to see a bunch of other OEMs using Qualcomm's latest platforms sometime in the not too distant future. And if you want to see how Qualcomm's latest silicon performs in some of these devices in the real world, we definitely have some plans to show you such things in the future. So if you don't want to miss out, be sure to sub to the channel. I wouldn't miss it. And if you have any questions about anything you heard today, please feel free to drop those questions down in the comments. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. And until next time, this is Rando Tech Info, signing out.